It's time for chapter seven of Mary Poppins by P.L. Travers. Chapter seven, The Bird Woman. Perhaps she won't be there, said Michael. Yes, she will, said Jane. She's always there, forever and ever. They were walking up Ludgate Hill on the way to pay a visit to Mr. Banks in the city. For he had said that morning to Mrs. Banks, My dear, if it doesn't rain, I think Jane and Michael might call on me at the office today. That is, if you're agreeable. I have a feeling I should like to be taken out to tea and shortbread fingers. And it's not often I have a treat. And Mrs. Banks had said she would think about it. But all day long, though Jane and Michael had watched her anxiously, she had not seemed to be thinking about it at all. From the things she said, she was thinking about the laundry bill and Michael's new overcoat and where was Aunt Flossie's address and why did that wretched Mrs. Jackson ask her to tea on the second Thursday of the month when she knew that was the very day Mrs. Banks had to go to the dentist's. Suddenly, when they felt quite sure that she would never think about Mr. Banks' treat, she said, "'Oh, children, don't stand there staring at me like that. Get your things on. You're going to the city to have tea with your father. Had you forgotten?' As if they could have forgotten. For it was not as though it were only the tea that mattered. There was also the bird woman, and she herself was the best of all treats. That is why they were walking up Ludgate Hill and feeling very excited. Mary Poppins walked between them wearing her new hat and looking very distinguished. Every now and then she would look into the shop window just to make sure the hat was still there and that the pink roses on it had not turned into common flowers like marigolds. Every time she stopped to make sure, Jane and Michael would sigh, but they dare not say anything for fear she would spend even longer looking at herself in the windows, turning this way and that to see which attitude was the most becoming. But at last they came to St. Paul's Cathedral, which was built a long time ago by a man with a bird's name. Wren, it was, but he was no relation to Jenny. That is why so many birds live near Sir Christopher Wren's cathedral, which also belongs to St. Paul. And that is why the bird woman lives there too. There she is, cried Michael suddenly, and he danced on his toes with excitement. Don't point, said Mary Poppins, giving a last glance at the pink roses in the window of a carpet shop. She's saying it! She's saying it! cried Jane, holding tight to herself for fear that she would break in two with delight. And she was saying it. The bird woman was there and she was saying it. Feed the birds, top in a bag! Feed the birds, top in a bag! Feed the birds, feed the birds! Top in a bag, over and over the same thing in a high chanting voice that made the word seem like a song. And as she said it, she held out a little bag of breadcrumbs to the passers-by. All round her flew the birds, circling and leaping and swooping and rising. Mary Poppins always called them sparrows because, she said conceitedly, all birds were alike to her. <laughs> but Jane and Michael knew that they were not sparrows, but doves and pigeons. They were fussy and chatty grey doves like grandmothers, and brown, rough-voiced pigeons like uncles, and green, crackling, no, I've no money today pigeons like fathers. And the silly, anxious, soft blue doves were like mothers. That's what Jane and Michael thought anyway. They flew round and round the head of the bird woman as the children approached, and then, as though to tease her, they suddenly rushed away through the air and sat on the top of St. Paul's, laughing and turning their heads away and pretending they didn't know her. 
It was Michael's turn to buy a bag. Jane had bought one last time. He walked up to the bird woman and held out four half pennies. Feed the birds, top into a bag, said the bird woman as she pulled a bag of crumbs into his hand and tucked the money away into the fold of her huge black skirt. Why don't you have penny bags, said Michael, then I could buy two. Feed the birds, top into a bag, said the bird woman, and Michael knew it was no good asking her any more questions. He and Jane had often tried, but all she could say, and all she had ever been able to say was, Feed the birds, top into a bag, just as a cuckoo can only say cuckoo, no matter what questions you ask him. Jane and Michael and Mary Poppins spread the crumbs in a circle on the ground, and presently, one by one at first, and then in twos and threes, the birds came down from St. Paul's. Dainty David, said Mary Poppins with a sniff, as one bird picked up a crumb and dropped it again from his beak. But the other birds swarmed upon the food, pushing and scrambling and shouting. At last, there wasn't a crumb left, for it is not really polite for a pigeon or a dove to leave anything on the plate. When they were quite certain that the meal was finished, the birds rose with one grand fluttering movement and flew round the bird woman's head, copying in their own language the word she said. One of them sat on her hat and pretended he was a decoration for the crown. And another of them mistook Mary Poppins' new hat for a rose garden and pecked off a flower. You sparrow! cried Mary Poppins and shook her umbrella at him. The pigeon, very offended, flew back to the bird woman and, to pay out Mary Poppins, stuck the rose in the ribbon of the bird woman's hat. You ought to be in a pie, that's where you ought to be, said Mary Poppins to him very angrily. Then she called to Jane and Michael, time to go, and she flung a parting glance of fury at the pigeon. But he only laughed and flicked his tail and turned his back on her. Goodbye, said Michael to the bird woman. Feed the birds, she replied smiling. Goodbye, said Jane. Tuppence a bag, said the bird woman and waved her hand. They left her then, walking one on either side of Mary Poppins. What happens when everybody goes away, like us, said Michael to Jane. He knew quite well what happened, but it was the proper thing to ask Jane, because the story was really hers. So... Jane told him, and he added the bit she forgotten. At night, when everybody goes to bed, began Jane, and the stars come out, added Michael. Yes, and even if they don't, all the birds come down from the top of St. Paul's and run very carefully all over the ground, just to see there are no crumbs left and to tidy it up for the morning. And when they've done that, You've forgotten the baths. Oh, yes. They bathe themselves and comb their wings with their claws. And when they've done that, then they fly three times round the head of the bird woman and then they settle. Do they sit on her shoulders? Yes, and on her hat. And on her basket with the bags in it. Yes, and some on her knee. Then she smooths down the head feathers of each one in turn and tells it to be a good bird. In the bird language. Yes, and when they're all sleepy and don't want to stay awake any longer, she spreads out her skirts as a mother hen spreads out her wings and the birds go creep, creep, creeping underneath. And as soon as the last one is under, she settles down over them making a nice little brooding nesting noise, and they sleep there till morning. Michael sighed happily. He loved that story and was never tired of hearing it. And it's all quite true, isn't it? He said, just as he always did. No, Mary Poppins said, who always said no. Yes, said Jane, 
who always knew everything. And that is the end of chapter 7.